Hello everybody, I'm Yoshiki Gami, president of Voss. I'm talking from Japan as usual. So today's my partner is Matt. Good morning, Matt. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Morning, Yoshi-san. Long time, no, no speak. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome everyone who is, uh, is just joining this. Uh, if this is your first time, this is Talk with Boss. This is our weekly live stream where we dive into a different Boss topic. And actually, this is our 50th live stream. Uh, so over 25 hours of content already available for you to watch. Lots to go back and, and, uh, and not uh, watch. And this is actually the first time we have moved from Facebook Live to YouTube Live as well. So if you're watching this, don't forget to add all your comments below. And we will have a couple of bits during the stream that we'll come to those. And don't forget to obviously subscribe to the Boss channel if you aren't already. So uh, Yoshi-san, do you want to introduce the theme for this week? Yes. So recently we have uh, two new products. So uh, we released the uh, on July 17th, HM2W, and also last mm -hmm. week we did Cube 3 2, and also Bruce, Bluetooth Audio MIDI Dual Adapter. So, yes, such three new products we, we are going to talk. Yes, and we've got uh, a variety of different questions on both. Two very different products, but some interesting points to cover on both. So, let's start with HM2W. Um, you know, the HM2W heavy metal. Um, I think finally the full information went live and dealers will be shipping very soon. Um, and I guess there was a lot of challenges with the R&D process on this one, Yosh san Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. You know, actually that project started by only one message from, from the customer. There mm -hmm. is a petition of the HM2 revival. So we announced uh, this project in last December, maybe, at the Talk with Boss. Then we set the Facebook uh, HM2W group and, and listening and getting um, the idea and the request from the people. Mm -hmm. Then finally, uh, it's very much getting close to the final stage. <laughs> yeah. So for us, this is a very uh, fast uh, project. You know, the product planning to the release uh, around eight months. That is quite a quick project for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think um, some some users might, might say that eight months is, is quite long, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can say from my experience, you know, short time working at Roland, you know, we are discussing products sometimes one year, one year and a half, you know, so eight months is, is very quick for us but I think boss has many quality checks to ensure that the customer enjoys the sound you know from from day one and maybe these processes take a little bit longer than people would expect right yes so we we, we need to guarantee uh, boss quality so we are doing a lot of tests uh, like uh, radiation and immunity of radio mm -hmm. and electrostatics test and high temperature and high humidity as environmental test. And mm -hmm. also we need to adapt a worldwide uh, standard regulation. So just making some unit as a sample, it's, it's kind of like easy, but mm -hmm. we are doing a lot of tests and it's no matter with the size of the product, you know, yeah. compact pedal, small, but all same uh, such a test is uh, required so yes this HM2W project is quite fast to get into <laughs> production uh, maybe we, we used uh, some special uh, technique you know before fixing <laughs> circuit we already uh, put the order of parts you know right right now that's electronic parts lead time is quite long you know mm. everybody knows uh, in in all over the world uh, electronic parts uh, delivery is very much difficult right now so yeah. this project quite fast yeah yeah i think um we we did actually do a live stream um quite a few weeks ago on a tour of the 
near Coda Factory um, as well. And we have many cool machines and, and ways to test the product. And, you know, customers I wouldn't necessarily see that, but there's so much that goes into that when we're shipping so many products worldwide. But I think it's, it's also important to understand that HM2W wouldn't exist without the fans, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the reason this, this pedal is, is here. Um, do you have any sort of special message for, for all of those people that have supported the project so yes. far? Yes, so this project is driven by a huge passion from the uh, core HM2 fans. Mm -hmm. So, and also we enjoy the uh, process to making HM2W with such a big fans. And that is yeah. very much meaningful for us. And mm -hmm. also finally, we released the, uh, the product uh, picture and that's set to max max setting. So <laughs> some people are very much happy to see that. So we are really yeah. appreciate uh, your cooperation and giving us a huge passion. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, thank you indeed. And I think, is there anything that you would like new users to try mm -hmm. uh, when they get HM2W? Yeah, maybe some guys start to try with the uh, old max setting, probably. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe sometimes we, we are told we are, set, we are making standard sound as a 12 o'clock setting, center setting. So that is our recommendation, you know. So as, as such meaning, you know, uh, all max setting is kind of like unexpected setting for us. <laughs> yeah. You know, and also HM2W, a very much Swedish death metal fan, is a mm -hmm. huge fan. So we are uh, showing uh, max max setting, but yeah. actually our original uh, standard setting is 12 o'clock and HM2W has a huge potential so please mm -hmm. uh, try to all the setting that has a very much wider variety of the sound yes yeah absolutely I think a lot of people maybe don't realize that our recommended setting on so many of our products our, our pedals especially is is 12 o'clock you know we set it so there's a good sound straight out of the box you know just like that but of course as you say HM2W has a huge range mm -hmm. and I think you know some people may ask what other genres of music you might be able to use HM2W for uh, do you have any sort of recommendations yeah so maybe shoegaze uh, type of music and also mm -hmm. very uh, simple blues rock uh, such yep. a guitarist are using HM2 for example David Gilmore of Pink Floyd and mm -hmm. also aircraft use uh, HM2. So please don't have any bias. Uh, <laughs> please try to the sound. And as I said, HM2W has a much variety of sound. So you can you can find very very basic sound to death metal. So right now dealer started to getting uh, pre-order. So the real unit will be. Uh, uh, will be available soon mm -hmm. and also now uh, some guys are showing some video like Aura England and also we have uh, some videos on both channel so please mm -hmm. uh, check the video and, and increase your image of the HM2W sound yes yes there's if you go to boss.info and you look for HM2W there's loads of content loads to see uh, and, and more, I'm sure, will will come in in time as well. But a huge range of sounds available, and as as you say, yeah, you're saying, you know, not necessarily put bias, just not just because of uh, just because of the name. Um, so before we dive into uh, the the next topic, I just thought we'd uh, just check in with the comments. Obviously, as I said, this is our first time mm -hmm. direct to YouTube Live. Um, so I can see. Uh, some someone here is called Boss is the Boss. Um, I think I this this guy is image. Koshibi. Yes, I was going to say. I yeah. think <laughs> I think that's that's Kossi. So he he joins all the time. So that's that's fantastic. Um, 
Ruben has asked why is the speaker battery powered? Uh, I'm guessing he's going to talk. Uh, he's talking about Cube Street, mm -hmm. which is something that we'll come to in a minute. So if you stay tuned, we'll come to that. Um, and then there's another question here about um, Cube Street and Cube Street EX. Again, we'll we'll come to that um, shortly. Um, and a new Mac setting may start another new wave of sound. Quite possibly. Uh, obviously, we have pedals that have created genres before, so who knows what will happen with HM2W. Um, so we'll go into Cube Street. So if you do have any questions, do pop them uh, in the chat. There's also some guys from, from Boss there as well. If we can't get round to them, and we'll try and get to as many as possible. Um, so yes, let's start with Cube Street 2. Um, so the original... Cube Street was released all the way back in 2007, so 14 years um, between that one and the new one, which is amazing. And also a big point for us is that we have changed the brand name now to, to Boss. Um, but I think actually it's important to note that maybe before Cube Street appeared, I think it was maybe a bit more difficult for people to actually perform live outdoors. Uh, you know, what's your thoughts on that, Yoshi-san? Yes. So, 14 years ago, probably people need to have power generator or a very mm. heavy uh, battery-driven amplifier. That, that, that mm. battery is kind of like a big, huge motorcycle battery or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and also, they need to use mixer and speaker pumps. So, mm -hmm. probably they need to use car for transportation. Mm -hmm. So Cube Street provided a, a variety of input and mixing function and speaker, amplifier, and the amplifier has a modeling effect. So, mm -hmm. and also that is uh, work, works with batteries. So that is a very light and powerful street amplifier. Maybe at that time, such kind of all-in-one solution was not existing. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's strange. You know, when we were preparing for this and I was thinking about that when I first started playing guitar and I don't remember too many people, mm. you know, having such such piece of equipment, you know, like, like a Cube Street, you know, get someone seeing and maybe play acoustic, but maybe no microphone or, or anything like that. So I, I actually think that Cube Street has allowed live performance to become even more popular. And... I guess we can gain a lot of positive reactions from customers who have used Cube Street. And I think now as well, as, as you know, Yoshi san many people using Cube Street worldwide for mm -hmm. their street performances. Yeah, yeah, we saw a lot of musicians. You know, when we hang out in London, Matt, you know, around mm. Covent Garden, the Piccadilly Circus, yep. and Leicester Square, and also, I saw a lot of guys in Germany right after uh, Frankfurt Music Messe. Yeah. And in the US, uh, maybe Santa Monica Beach and also Times Square in New York City, I saw a lot of guys using Cube Street. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I saw a guy is playing with battery driven synthesizer, Juno, mm -hmm. Juno series. And yeah. recently, I saw beatboxers, not only guitarists. So, uh, first generation Cube Street. Maybe Cube name is very much famous for guitarists. So yes. the starting time, uh, most of the customers are electric guitar player because mm -hmm. of Cube. But mm -hmm. after that, acoustic guitar player started to use Cube Street. And now it's not only guitar player, maybe vocal and also dancing guys and also yeah. beatboxers, a lot of guys are using Cube Street. Yeah, yeah, it's become a, a big outdoor amplifier, which I think is great. And, you know, I always stop and think when I see people, you know, performing and, you know, quite often using a Cube Street and, you know, as you said, stopped with you. And I don't know how often a street performer, when you stopped in front, would know that the person who helped build the amplifier is standing <laughs> in front of them. But... You know, I think, um, you know, that it's interesting we see so many. So when it came to creating Cube Street 2, the, the successor model, mm -hmm. 
you know, what were your thoughts about the um, the development? Yeah, so we got a lot of requests, uh, much lighter, much louder, you know, mm -hmm. especially in Japan, as uh, street musicians, there are a lot of girls band, you know, they, they don't mm. want to have a heavy one. So that is a yep. totally uh, huge benefit for street musicians. Mm -hmm. So that weight is 4.4 kilogram. It's uh, 9.7 pound. It's uh, light, light, uh, 1.5 kilogram, 3.3 pound lighter than uh, current model. Amazing. And that's provided very easy to transport. Mm -hmm. And also the body is now uh, ABS plastic case. Mm -hmm. Uh, current one is a uh, wood cabinet. Yeah. So the ABS plastic cabinet, we have uh, a lot of bracing leaf. So mm -hmm. that is very much a uh, solid body. And also uh, ABS body, we can design much complicated uh, structure. So that we can make much uh, tight sealing as a speaker cabinet right. so such kind of uh, know-how we got from cube street ex which is released mm -hmm. in 2014. yeah yeah and is there um so that you know that's obviously the the body shape and obviously it's amazing how much lighter it is um compared to the original one mm -hmm. uh what about updates in terms of the the sound yeah so this time we increase the battery from six to eight so the Cube Street 2 uses uh, eight WA batteries. Mm -hmm. Then then output power is double, 10 watt, uh, mm -hmm. has a five watt plus five watt stereo. And mm -hmm. because uh, current Cube Street, everybody wanted to have much more uh, sound power. So we wanted to re uh, react to this request. Mm -hmm. And also, this time we are using high efficiency power supply and the power amp circuit. So power consumption is totally improved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, that, that obviously helps with things like battery life as well. So no need to change during a, you know, a performance and, you know, it makes it kind of um, a little bit safer, I think, in, in the minds of, of the people using it. And I, and I guess many people are probably now asking about the sound quality that you know the quality of the sound what about updates um related to that yes so as i said the new cube street 2 uses abs plastic body so mm -hmm. that's provide a much more complicated design of the cabinet so we decided to separate electric parts compartment and speaker cabinet right so this uh, provides much more uh, clean sound and sometimes mm -hmm. uh, high power sound pressure makes some scatter noise or such kind of vibration. But mm -hmm. no need to uh, worry about that problem. Uh, ABS plastic body provided much more solid uh, cabinet. And also right. we designed the new uh, speaker, which is high input power and efficiency, efficiency is very much uh, good. So mm -hmm. sound is very much improved. Maybe, of course, our current Cube Street is providing good sound, but new one is uh, having much more low end and also mm -hmm. high end. So we, we expanded the sound range and also you can get much more powerful sound from uh, uh, Cube Street 2. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, as you said, the, the, the original Cube Street is great and we really have built this one for, almost from the ground up and, you know, new speakers. It's not just, you know, small changes. There's some very, very big changes with, with this one. And I guess that changes in terms of specifications as well. So there's a wider application and, and usage, I think, with Cube Street too. Um, you know, what's your thoughts around, um, around that? Yes. As I said, you know, Cube Street started with guitar players, but now a lot of people are using Cube Street. So mm -hmm. uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, keyboard, and those aerophone, like uh, digital music, musical instrument. 
and mm -hmm. also play styles a lot, you know, band and beatboxers, uh, mm -hmm. dancers, just, uh, you know, dancing with BGM or something, you know. So, yeah. and also this time we add some acoustic guitar types on amp type. We add three types. So that uh, covers piezo, uh, magnet, uh, magnetic pickup, and nylon string guitar. Mm -hmm. So maybe a lot of uh, acoustic guitar type, you can get suitable sound. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I think not only is it great for guitarists and singers, but also really great for, as you said, a range of other, other um, musicians as well. And I think one thing that's really good um, for you know guitar players especially is the fact that we've also added uh, a harmony effect but also a looper effect so that's great for kind of singing guitar players I guess mm -hmm. yes so looper play is very much popular right now but mm -hmm. still maybe some people don't use the harmony function maybe they don't need don't know about the harmony function but mm -hmm. please try to use harmony function, especially if you are uh, playing along, uh, singing with the acoustic guitar or something, mm -hmm. then you can get much more high class uh, performance with mm -hmm. uh, you know, automatic harmony. Maybe you will be surprised if you try to use this function. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe some people are scared yeah. to use the harmony function, <laughs> but actually you can add a huge uh, layer of uh, of sound to to your performance and great for people. I've seen a lot of people sing just to background music, so yeah. good for that as as well to add another uh, layer. Um, but also on on top of that, we've added the Bluetooth audio MIDI dual adapter, uh, which we released at the same time mm. and unlocks a huge amount of extra um, features for street performers. Uh, do you want to talk about some of those? Yes, that is huge possibility but such a small device <laughs> provides yeah you know you can you can set this device on the back panel of cube 3 2 then mm -hmm. you can get a connection between cube 3 2 and the smartphone and tablet and pc so anything you know so if you use a cube 3 2 editor you can edit much more uh, functions and parameters you can access mm -hmm. a lot of stuff yes yes uh, and and yeah I don't underestimate the lot there's there's a lot of things on there so for example you know you can edit effects more deeply change parameters change which type of effects you want to use you can change the output settings so you can link two cube streets together in stereo you can even store and recall uh, presets for later um, you know, in kind of almost like a set list kind of fashion, a scene fashion. Um, and it's possible to change settings that can't be done on the Cube Street 2 alone, which I think is very important. Um, but from your side, Josh, then, is there any recommendations you have with, um, with the Bluetooth adapter? Yeah. So one very much useful function is auto ducking mode. You know, mm -hmm. so your mic input or uh, musical instrument input uh, mm -hmm. the cube street 2 is automatically uh, suppress BGM sound level mm -hmm. from from the smartphone by Bluetooth you know so that is that is easy if you are playing alone you don't need to mm -hmm. touch uh, Bruce, uh, cube street 2 and also <laughs> yeah. if with a BGM you have to yell up, you know, something, but no need to <laughs> yell up. So that yeah. is very much smart performance. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's like having a virtual PA operator, you know, mm -hmm. a sound guy um, for you. And because it's possible to play back uh, music wirelessly as well, you know, using, you know, background music, using the B, uh, BT MIDI adapter um, from a smartphone, smartphone device, which is, which is great. Do you have any other sort of uh, final recommendations for yes. usage? Yes. When you use a Bluetooth uh, backing track, at the mm -hmm. same time, if you use both wireless uh, WL series, then mm -hmm. you can get totally wireless environment. So you can walk mm -hmm. around. 
and also uh, iCube link is available. You can connect smartphone and PC, and also Cube Street 2 has a USB audio interface. So if you want to uh, have uh, streaming performance, uh, you can get you can connect your uh, sound to PC by using Cube Cube Street 2, mm -hmm. which, which provides much more beautiful sound. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's there's some really modern usage features there as well. You know, using the USB, using the iCube link for streaming. There's some fantastic features that, again, it's not just bringing the best out of your instrument, but also to bring the best out of your um, your performance. You know, mm -hmm. and being out there and whatever instrument that you use, whether it's a guitarist, a vocalist, a band, a beatboxer. You know, there's there's plenty of uh, of uses for you as well, which I think is uh, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that that's that, and I guess you're saying people can find a lot more out on our website as well. Yes, you know you can get a lot of information from bass.info, and also mm -hmm. you can access to a lot of functions by using this Bluetooth audio MIDI dual adapter. So please mm -hmm. try to use uh, this adapter and access to a uh, lot of functions mm -hmm. yes it unlocks so much extra stuff so yeah mm. boss.info uh, for more information um, with that and if you've got any deep questions as well there's a lot of information on there that will will hopefully help you in your in your journey to find out the best so before we uh, before we finish up let's do another final check on um, the comments as mm. well a few people um, Checking in, uh, downward 64. I have two Cube Streets uh, and the keyboard amp. Loves the cubes, uh, which is amazing. Um, some people asking about uh, can I use the Bluetooth audio and the MP3 input at the same time? Uh, yes, I don't think there's any problem to use both of those. You've got an auxiliary input, which is like a physical input as well. Um, but we added the Bluetooth for, for wireless streaming. Um, and I can see that our boss guys are in there as well. Uh, someone's waiting for it to be available in Malaysia, um, which is good. Um, let's also have a look. Yeah, someone was talking about the batteries and rechargeable batteries. And I think one of the things that we, we would say about an, a non-rechargeable battery pack is that if you get into a tough situation, it's easy to be able to change the batteries. You know, it's not so easy to find a, to find a power outlet. So, um, you know, we do have that on there as well. And I can see that some of the other guys are jumping in and answering some questions as well. So many questions and a lot more people joining the stream, which is um, fantastic. Um, when will Cube Street 2 be available for purchase? Um, it's available to pre-order from dealers now. Any, any major boss dealer worldwide, you should be able to order. Um, and stock will be arriving soon. So please do just check with your dealer. They will have the latest information for you as well. Um, there's a few more questions that we can't get around to today, but we'll try and get some answers in the comments there for you as well. Um, so Yoshisan, that's obviously all of our new products. Mm. Um, do you want to talk about the theme for the next stream? Yes, we should go back to waveform analysis. So that is part mm -hmm. three of waveform analysis. Maybe we can check the WASA pedals and mm -hmm. also some of the other pedals. Yes, uh, and if you haven't seen those, uh, do go back and watch those. Really, really interesting deep dive into some of our some of our products. A really good understanding of uh, of, of waveform and, and our sound. So do check those. So we are now, as I said, streaming on YouTube Live um, every two weeks. Um, so if you're a regular viewer, that's a bit of a change, but for anyone new, that's every two weeks. So don't forget to leave all of your comments in, in the notes. Our next BOSS stream will be Wednesday the 14th of July, 7.30am UK time, 3.30pm Japanese Standard Time, 11.30pm uh, LA time, um, but that will be obviously the previous evening, so July the 13th, and we look forward to seeing you all then. Thanks very much, and uh, see you soon. 
Thank you very much for joining. See you soon.